2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 5. The Bible says here, Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Uh, quite a profound thing that there are people that have a form of godliness. They know the right things to say, but yet there's no Holy Spirit power there. All right? There's no uh, fellowship of the Spirit when you talk to these people. Um, it's like they're talking about something completely different because they are. And I uh, got to thinking about that verse, that passage, and I thought, what a perfect description of modern Christianity. Um, these people... Oh, uh, we have this new thing. We're doing this. God is doing a new thing. I remember there was a DC talk, uh, CCM band, you know, rap music or whatever. You used to listen to that stuff. You know, gag me now. But uh, back in the day when I was a modern professing Christian, uh, I used to listen to that garbage. And, you know, God's doing a new thing. Uh, really? Where does the Bible say that? Where does the Bible say in the end times that there'd be this great new way and this great new religion and that um, modern Christians would be so much better than the old time, time ones and those old time Christians that had all those old you know, standards and everything? Uh, the Bible says that there'd be a falling away and that the time would come when they would not endure sound doctrine um, and on and on. You know, the passage we read there in 2 Timothy chapter 3 talks about... Um, perilous times coming and men would be fierce and despisers of those that are good and everything else it's not a time of doctrinal purity it's a time of doctrinal destruction as i'm slipping on the ice <laughs> uh, we're in that wonderful time right now spring thaw where it's not really even springtime here in northern maine but we've had a really wimpy winter and um yeah just uh weird in between snow and and uh the lane melting and everything else you can see there it gets all the nice ruts in it and everything and uh just wonderful but you know if you're a modern christian out there you have to understand where i'm coming from i am not i was not raised in some king james only cult and whatever and real conservative i wasn't i was raised in the modern church using new versions and the whole thing new american standard bible and uh niv is what I used for many years. And uh, actually a little over half of my life was spent with that stuff. I listened to the Christian rock. I defended Christian rock. And uh, Luther, come on. The dog's going out onto the road. Um, but I was raised with that stuff. See, so I used to qualify for that verse. So it isn't some kind of a condemnation that I'm putting people under that you can't change and there's no hope for you and whatever else. That's not the truth. That's not what's going on here. Um, what I had to come to the place of realization uh, in my life was I'm not really a Christian. I don't really bear anything in common with these people in this book. And it's not because, you know, well, times have changed. Uh, we don't wear sandals and we don't, you know, go around and think... That's not the issue, okay? Um, I can wear modern clothing, but still share the exact same mindset as my brethren in the past. Luther, get. Um, you know, I can, I can think like they think. I can go through the similar experiences, and, and you know, uh, and you should be going through that. There should be relatability between you and the New Testament. And uh, right now we have Christians, as I once was. Um, I'll just say it this way. Let me condemn myself in the past uh, to make it more understandable, hopefully, to my viewers. Um, I was using the new versions. And if you would have said to me, um, where did your new version come from? You know, Bible store? I don't know. Uh, but where did it come from? Where, why did, how did you get this new translation? My father always used a King James Bible. He didn't understand why. He just, you know, this is the one I was raised with. I'm not going to change. I don't need to have it updated or changed or whatever else. I believe it as it stands, which is okay. But, you know, you should know where your Bible comes from. Well, I didn't know. Um, found out later on. And that's why I changed to, be a, to become a King James Bible believer. But uh, I listened to the modern music. Uh, did, we did sing old hymns in the church building I was raised in. 
but you know and i love the old hymns but i thought you know they're not really relevant to today and they're not really going to uh get young people saved and the whole thing you know i fell for all that ccm the lies of uh, we need to you know when in rome be like the romans you know the whole all the stuff you know we we can't witness to the next generation if we're using the old hymns and whatever well the old hymns are more for singing praises to god not for evan evangelization purposes but um all the different practices go down through the list of what is modern professing christianity and i very ignorantly was doing that stuff you see i had a form of godliness but I denied the power thereof. I had no spiritual power in my life because I was not born again. And that's the case with modern professing Christians. Modern professing Christians, they can say the right things, they can really sound legitimate sometimes, but there's no spiritual power in their life. And I'll tell you right now, that's why all this evil Satanism and everything else, that's why it's growing so much here in America and around the world too, because uh, people are professing to be Christians, and yet they have no spiritual power. I mean, and the most powerful thing that exists on this earth is the Word of God. And the Word of God in English is the King James Bible. And there are derivatives of the King James Bible in other languages that God has used. I would never say that only the King James Bible has to be English and English alone, and no other translations, no other you know languages. No, I don't believe that way. I believe God chooses a language, but there are people that can translate it into their own tongues. Um, you see that in the book of Acts, chapter 2, the day of Pentecost. God speaking through them in multiple tongues. God didn't just say, I'm only going to speak through Koine Greek or something. Um, no, God chose multiple languages. That's what tongues means, by the way, in the Bible. It's not some magic thing that happens to you when you join a Pentecostal church. Okay? <laughs> um... But it's an extremely important thing there to understand what true spiritual power is and understand the manuscript evidence thing. And uh, probably going to be doing a video on this in the future, but many people are not even aware of the fact that the new versions, the scholarship behind them, they say what we found older and better manuscripts than what was available to the translators of the King James Bible. That's not true. Um, what they did is they brought out some of these things as new discoveries when in reality the King James translators had access to Vaticanus. Sinaiticus they didn't have access to because I believe Sinaiticus was created in the 19th century by Constantine von Tischendorf. Uh, that's a whole other issue that you can study. But the Vaticanus manuscript, yeah, they had access to it. And they didn't use it. Erasmus had access to it. I mean, he had... He was the Roman Catholic Church's greatest scholar there in the 16th century, early 16th century. He certainly would have had access to the Vaticanus manuscript. And he knew about it, and he did not use it. Because it was not the same type, it didn't have the same readings as the received text. The ones that came from the Orthodox uh, churches and things. Uh, the vast majority of Greek manuscripts in the world... Uh, that are out there extant in other words they've been looked at they've been studied there in a museum or a seminary or wherever the vast majority over 99 percent line up with the text that underlies the king james bible so but the devil in his subtlety through his little catholic church they came out and they said um we're going to release a more accurate translation than the king james bible um which was a lie because you look at the, a lot of the newer readings, which we have found better, older, newer readings. Uh, you know, they're older in terms of manuscript evidence, but they're better than the King James Bible. Those readings actually were available in 1582 with the Jesuit uh, Reims New Testament, which I've proved in a video. So the whole new version thing was a lie. And again, another way to prove that... Um, is I want you to think about something. The King James Bible was released in 1611. It goes through some spelling changes and some whatever else. I mean, they're printing, they're typesetting by hand. Of course, there'll be a few spelling issues. Um, English as a language was also changing and developing. So you, they went from the Gothic font to Roman font. I have a whole video on that, the thing of 1611 or 1769. But they, they were no big doctrinal changes or whatever else. They stuck with the correct 
readings and things in the King James Bible. And, but in 1881, or in the late 1800s, I should say, before then, uh, they came out and they said, we should probably do another revision of the King James Bible. And two heretics, Brooke Foss Westcott and Fenton John Anthony Hort, came out and they said, oh, we'll be part of this, you know, committee that uh, revises the King James Bible and makes some much needed changes. And they actually introduced a whole new text, a whole new Greek text, based on what the Catholic Church said at the time was the oldest and the best. But what happened is this little propaganda thing that they did uh, was only supposed to last for a little bit of time. But what they did is, very subtly, they came out with this older, better reading thing, and um, it lasted up until probably the 19, I don't even know, 80s, 90s, something like that, that they were making this claim. But then they found older manuscript evidence that actually went back to Receptus readings. Huh. And the newer editions of the Nestle's text actually have removed things from the, what's called the critical apparatus, that shows the manuscript evidence for these different things and whatever. And because there's so much evidence for the readings in the King James Bible, uh, the Nestle's text, they had to eliminate that stuff. We don't want people to know about that anymore. Because scholarship, true, real, you know, New Testament textual criticism lines up with the King James Bible, if you're honest about it. But you see, there's an agenda to get rid of that book, of the King James Bible, because there's power there. There's a spiritual power behind the pages of the King James Bible. And so all these people are now going around with the version that they prefer, and it's actually based on a propaganda hit piece from the 19th century that's not even true anymore. <laughs> that's the funny part. I think, I forget the exact number, but it's something like 400 changes to the newer editions of the Nestle's text that had to actually go back to Receptus readings because of finding older papyrus fragments or whatever else. I remember I did a, a um, seminar the one time at a Baptist church many years ago, and I showed a reading from, I think it was P66, papyrus fragment 66, where they actually put a word there that was that's in the text, but then they put omit above it. You know, the, they underlined it or did some kind of thing saying omit this word. And I said, if you have an NIV and a, or a New American Standard Version, I said, look it up in that verse. That word's omitted in your text. And there were two guys there that were modern version, you know, they're better, older manuscripts, the whole thing. And they both, I saw them, they opened up their Bibles and they're flipping to the page. And they both looked down and they went, this confused look of, he's right. <laughs> the word's not there. But there it is in Papyrus Fragment, you know, 66, I think it was. Don't quote me on that. I've, I've just doing this from memory here. But I think it was Papyrus Fragment 66 that had this uh, older, you know, reading that was said to, to, you know, you need to omit this. So, but literally we have Christians, professing Christians right now, that are using Bibles that they don't even know the history of their Bible. And like I said, okay, the King James Bible is no good. 1881, they come out with a new version. And then they come out with the American Standard Version, you know, Revised Version, American Standard Version, then the Revised Standard Version, and then the um, New Revised Standard Version, the New American Standard Version, the, you know, the NIV, the NIV 2001, the NIRV, the TNIV, the newest NIV, the, you know, <clears throat> what's it all about? You mean to tell me that the English language is changing that much? No. Um, the English language is not changing that much. There is an agenda. I think the number is something like 120 new versions in 100 years. Basically the 20th century. There was something like 120 new versions and, and that's, you know, total version. If you look at New Testaments, I think the number was over 200. You know, where they would just release a New Testament. Um, there's a conspiracy there. A conspiracy to make people have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. Hmm. Just like the Bible said would happen in the end times. So my challenge, if you're still with me out there, I know that the attention span of the average modern Christian is not very good. <laughs> Again, speaking from experience, you know, I was the 
part of that movement for a long time, as I said earlier. But if you're still with me, I want you to examine yourself, whether you be in the faith, prove your own selves, like it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, and start to look at things and say, you know what? Why is it that I can't find any historical evidence, so to speak, for my stands that I'm taking? Huh. That's kind of weird. Um, if I could go in a time machine back 200 years ago, would I be able to get along with the Christians 200 years ago? How about 300 years ago, 400 years ago, 500 years ago? You back through. Well, I just can't relate to the people in the past. Boy, I, I like my rock music and I like my girls in, in skimpy shorts and clothing and tight, you know, leggings and things up front doing praise and worship music, you know. I like my drums. I like my rock guitars. I like laser lights. I like to have the the uh, whole congregation, you know, the, the church there. I like to have the sanctuary. I like to have it all blackened out, you know, and I like the laser lights and smoke effects and things. Um, you're actually part of the Antichrist system. What you're doing is condemned in Scripture. Uh, you have a form of godliness, but you deny the power thereof. And what's going to happen is, um, the time's going to come when you're going to need the power of the Lord. The persecution will come, and you're going to look for the power, and it's not going to be there. You'll pray, you'll call out to God, and God won't listen. Sorry, can't help you. Uh, that's the scary thing about this whole thing. Uh, what these people are going to be going through. And of course, ultimately, it's going to get to the point where... Um, the Lord says, come up hither. And a lot of these uh, modern church services, as it's been well said by many, uh, including myself down through the years, modern church services, if, if the catching up of the body of Christ happens during the service, the service won't even be disturbed. The people will be gone. They'll, they'll hear a loud clap of thunder because that's what lost people hear when God speaks. Saved people hear a voice like a trumpet. Lost people hear thunder. So they'll hear, boom, they'll hear this explosion. What was that? I don't know. Okay, let's get back to the rock music. Let's get back to praising, you know, praising Jesus. And it'll be, yeah, oh, putting their hands up. They don't even realize. <laughs> the Lord just showed, the Lord just proved that they weren't saved. Pretty wild to think about. So, um, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. They have a form but they deny the power. I don't want to take stands for the King James Bible. I would be labeled as a cult member. I don't want to take stands for the old hymns. I don't want to do this. I don't want to, you know, clean up my speech and stop watching Hollywood movies. And I, I don't want that stuff. You better repent of that modern Christianity stuff. It is of the devil. It is completely of the devil. Satan's ministers are transformed into the ministers of righteousness, the Bible says. Whew. You better get out of that modern church stuff. I'm sure glad I did. So that's going to be it. See you in the next video.